It's Monday, July 11th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a problem of the tech podcast network. Everyone got a great show lined up for you tonight. We have some new additions and quite a little bit to talk about. We got a lot of tech to get into as well. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. Or go fly. Microphone. Or go fly. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go fly. Interflux totism suppressor. All right. I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Bucky, Bucky, who's got the button? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast. Coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio overlooking Greater Honolulu. Hey, everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Todd Cochran, and I want to encourage you to get over to geeknewscentral.com. Check out our great content over there. Of course, check out all of our archive podcasts, of which there are many. And uh, give everybody, give everyone a check out. We'll talk about all the shows there in just a few moments. Of course, I want to give a warm welcome to the Ahana. All of you that are longtime listeners of the show, they're part of the family here. Hey, thanks for being here. Thanks for staying subscribed. And really, you guys, you know, the, the core audience, the core folks that are here show after show, um, sending comments in and providing feedback, whether it be you want me to read it on the air or not. It's uh, definitely greatly appreciated, and uh, really, it's it's what I look forward to doing. This show is for you guys uh, twice a week, and uh, the mainstay of the of the Geek News Central website and everything that we do here is around this anchor show. So again, thank you for your support, and uh, for those of you watching on the stream tonight, if you're uh, checking us out for the very first time, make sure you get over to geeknewscentral.com and, and, and subscribe to the show. You'll find the subscription bar really right on the main website. And it's real easy to find. It's the second column of the uh, website that has uh, all of the different shows at Geek News Central, the audio and video feeds. Of course, some of the shows are, are video feed only. But uh, get subscribed to them via iTunes, via Zoom Marketplace, via your RS, your favorite RSS uh, podcatcher, whatever it may be. And uh, don't ever miss a single episode. To ensure that you don't miss an episode, you can always uh, sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter will contain everything that I'm going to cover during the show. We basically blast that out to you immediately following the show, and it's really kind of a great way to stay abreast of what's going on here. Well, boy, I tell you, lots going on, uh, lots to talk about here. And, uh, you know, I guess first and foremost, if you have comments about today's show, you can Twitter me at Geek News, or you can call the show hotline at 619-342-7365. Or, of course, you can email me at geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com. Of course, we're available on Facebook as well. So you can go to facebook.com forward slash geeknews. All right, let me just get into some of my stack here. I've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Let's take care of a little sponsorship business first. Of course, I want to thank GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here of the show. And we've got a great deal for you this month. We've got a web hosting plan that just cannot be beat. This is unbelievable. What it is, it's a $1.99. Yes, you get a three months of economy web hosting for just a buck ninety-nine a month. Yes, a dollar ninety-nine a month by using uh, my promo code. And uh, basically it's Geek77. And you'll be able to find that promo code right at the Geek New Central website. And basically it'll be right in the show notes as well. So Geek77, you'll find it to, again in the second paragraph of the show notes, or you can come over to the Geek New Central website, basically go to geeknewcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy for all of my promo codes. But this deal, this is what you really want to do. You want to sign up for three months with that economy hosting plan. And then at the end of the three months, you come back and renew and use one of my other promo codes to basically get a, a second discount for the additional 12 months to take you out for a full year. So really, you're getting... Uh, virtually three months for free or three months for six dollars and it might as well be free a couple of a, a couple of a coffee costs you more than that so uh at starbucks or wherever you go to get your your latte but um definitely check us out and thanks for GoDaddy for being a sponsor here 
Again, lots of great promo codes at geeknewcenter.com forward slash GoDaddy. Well, let's go ahead and talk just a second here about um, some things that are going on. Uh, I've been going to, I think I talked about a couple of shows previously. I've been uh, seeing the uh, massage therapist, John, that uh, took care of me uh, after my injury back in uh, 2004. And uh, he is a shiatsu therapist. Um, I tell you, I've been to him three times now, and, and what a world of difference. And I was talking to him today after the end of the appointment about some things going on, and uh, we did some experimental, I guess for a better word, it's it's almost like a mini, um, it's little tabs, little stick-on tabs that have almost a sharp point on them. It's almost like... Um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for here? I was thinking about it before. The It's where they use pins on you, the Chinese way. <laughs> anyway, I'm pulling a blank. But anyway, it's a way you could permanently touch a few points, and he basically is doing some uh, experimentation on me, I guess, and I think it's experimentation, but he put these little tabs on in three different points, explained what it was supposed to do. We'll see after 24 hours if I get any relief from a specific ailment. But you got to love... Guys that uh, study the stuff, that do um, different type of massage therapy, you know, they're 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 almost better than a, chiro a chiropractor. To be honest with you, they really are. But uh, definitely an increase in life of standard for me. It's it's been good. And even though it's it's about sixty five dollars a session to go see him, um, boy, I tell you, it's almost like uh, investing in uh, body and soul. It's been it's been fantastic. And along with that, I know many of you are investing in body and soul by going on vacation. So I know that uh, you know this time of year, many of you have, have been out already or you're just getting ready to go on vacation. Uh, don't forget to take the show with you on your mobile device, no matter how you're consuming it, because we've got lots of content for you. If you're going on a road trip or if you're going to be hanging out at the beach, what a better way than to, uh, to listen to the old geek here at Geek News Central. But enjoy your vacation, and if you need to completely unplug, that's even the more important part. One thing I want to try is what I've been trying to do is work on getting more coverage at Geek News Central of conferences. And what I'm looking to do is to find people that want to be our eyes and ears at these, uh, at these, at these conferences. If you're planning on going to a tech or a social media conference that is basically a national event, not something is kind of like semi-local where you'd go in and there'd be like 25 people. I'm talking about a true convention where you either had to pay an entrance fee to attend sessions or you're going to something that's relatively big. Um, what I'm looking for are some freelancers. And I can help offset some of your conference costs by you being our eyes and ears at those conferences that you're going to. I already got some responses from some folks saying, hey, I'm going to this one. Another guy said going to that one. So I'll be reaching out to those folks and basically saying, hey, this is how much I pay you for five, six, seven blog articles based upon the, you know, what you saw at the specific show that you were at our conference. And really it allows me to get some insight into the, some of these shows without having to be there. And oftentimes you want to try to tr buy the track material later. It's very expensive. And so sometimes it's just better to get an inside look of the highlights that go on at different shows. So if you're going to a tech conference or you're going to a social media event that's big, um, drop me a line here at geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com, and you can be our eyes and ears on the ground at these events and get paid uh, to do so. We're not paying huge amounts of money, but we're going to be definitely uh, making it noteworthy enough to offset some of your expenses uh, while you're there, And uh, but it will require a certain amount of uh, commitment on your part to do that. So drop me a line if you're, if you're interested. Um, on the Saturday Morning Tech Show, when we did the Hangout, Boy, oh boy, I learned a lot real quick about uh, Google Plus Hangout. We started off by using the um, Ohanasaurus Channel 1 to do the Hangout. And you guys know that this machine that's behind me here, uh, there's actually two machines that run two different Skype channels. It um, woefully underpowered to do the Hangout correctly. So I had everything wired up where I'd have the nice camera and all set up. So ultimately, I was able to jack into... You, this machine right here that I'm doing the show with and, and use my webcam, which kept going in and out of focus for, for whatever reason. We think it was because I was essentially out of bandwidth and it was degrading the video quality. 
but uh, because I hadn't had any issue the night before with that. But make a long story short, uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, some different solutions for the Saturday morning tech show when we do the show in the Hangout and Google+. Plus. It was awesome. If you haven't watched the video or listened to the show, we had members from the Tech Podcast Network. I think there was a total of seven of us in the Hangout just kind of talking tech, talking about Hangout, talking about different things. It was really cool. It was a different way to do a show, and I think you'll be really impressed just by the if nothing else, the crosstalk and back and forth, and the audio quality was good. It really was awesome. So uh, if you want to see this thing in action, just go back and watch the Saturday morning uh, test tech show. Another thing I'm doing is what we've really determined here is that the video size of the shows are huge. And what we want to do is start putting a, one additional video encode out um, one for mobile devices and one that's going to go into like kind of a Roku or master channel. So there's going to be a new RSS feed. We're not going to, we're going to make some switches and what's going to be fed in the actual video feed that you get, the one that you're subscribed to now will be the feed where we're going to make it better for mobile devices. So we're just going to downsize that video to smaller uh, resolution. We will publicize the larger feed, so if you want to stay up on the on the more um, robust uh, video encode, we'll give you that information as well. But really need to separate out because what we're finding is if I'm watching content on the Roku, I'm not real happy with the quality. And just because we're trying to make this happy medium, I think we have to go to two um, video encodes in order to – because we've gotten some feedback from some of you saying, hey, Todd, that file's too big, or number two – um, I want a better quality one, so we're going to split the difference and have uh, two different video um, encodes available. Uh, what's that made? What I've done here is I'm testing some software tonight. It's called. Um, it's all about me saving time and being productive and being able to leave the studio here at uh, 11 p.m. Honolulu time. But I purchased a box from the folks, and this is awesome. I'm going to tell you if you're looking for a very robust video capture basically a, a device that will take a multitude of inputs and be able to capture an mp4 file mp4 m4v file you want to look out for the folks at black magic design and i'm starting to go with more of their stuff because it's really what they do they do well but they got this device called the h.264 pro recorder and uh, it's a little pricey but you get your money's worth out of this box and um I did some testing on it so far. I'm off, I'm just absolutely thrilled with the quality. So probably the video that is put out tonight on the main feed, which we're not going to put the two feeds up, will be the uh, Pro Recorder encode just to give it a try to kind of see what the delta is there. Um, and uh, I would imagine that download will be a pretty big download. So, again, we'll probably come in with the next uh, RSS feed on the next show and get that kind of subdivided so that you guys can get a better, you can pick your pick your poison, really, for what you want. All right, I've gone on here quite a while already. Let me go through the rest of my stuff. Um, Shoko uh, is supposed to be coming home on Thursday. Right now, it's up in the air. Um, whether or not she's going to come home, I've encouraged her to extend. Um, I don't have to travel until to June 30th, I mean July 30th. So I basically said, if you come home on the 29th, uh, that'll work. Um, situation is touch and go there with their dad. Uh, so basically, that's all I have really got on that uh, from an update from the wife and what's going on in the family side. I do want to share something with you, though, and, uh, and please indulge me a little longer here in the intro of the show. Those of you that have been a listener or a viewer of the show for a long time, do you remember the Blue Man? Now, some of you do. Some of you go way back to when we were on Ford Island and when my seven-year-old was much younger and talking about playing with Jeffrey, the blue man. You guys remember that story? For those of you that uh, don't, um, basically Jeffrey, the blue man, we deduced was a ghost. And we lived uh, where we lived on historic Ford Island. If you drew a line between the USS Arizona and the USS Utah, the line from between those two sunken vessels um, basically went right through my home. And we felt that we were on a walkway uh, that was in between those two vessels, and there were, we had some paranormal activity that happened at the house. And that goes way back to some of the earlier shows. But 
long story short, um, my seven-year-old since uh, the 4th of July been acting kind of funny, and so I was told him tonight, come on, let's take a shower together, and he ran in and grabbed his towel, and I said, what's, what's, what's going on with you? What's going on? You know, I'm scrubbing his shampoo in his head, and he's he's like, Dad, do you, do you believe in ghosts? And I'm like, well, it depends, you know. He says, well, he's, he says, you know, when we were out for the 4th of July, we were on Fort Island, and this is, remember, this is where we lived before, so we went there, and there was a good place to view the fireworks. And he says, I think I saw something during the 4th of July, and it kind of scared me. And he went on to talk about that. And a couple other things have happened to him, so he was kind of indulging me. So I don't know if I got a little psychic on my hand or not, but I don't know about you, but make the little skin stand, get a little chicken skin going on here. Um, do, 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 do. So uh, more, so we talked about it quite a bit, and and uh, are you scared of him? No. Are you, are you talking to him? No. And uh, so he doesn't remember. I asked him about the, because he was quite a bit younger, I asked him about the the Blue Man, the Jeffrey event, and uh, he uh, he didn't remember that. So um, anyway, we'll keep you advised on this. See if I've got a <laughs> clairvoyant psychic in the house or something. I don't know. We'll see. But, um, you know, this kid's pretty honest, you know, and this was just kind of an unrela unrelated thing. So I thought I would give you all that's been here, part of the family, a long time, uh, an update. Okay. Um, hey, we've been streaming at Tech Podcast, so don't forget to come over to techpodcast.com forward slash live from time to time. We've got a schedule over there on all the Tech Podcast Network members that are streaming live. Also, uh, the Chrome show, uh, episode number two is out, and I'm a little bit worried about the Chrome show, and I'll tell you why. Sustainability of that show over the long haul, I'm a little concerned about. Initially, when I went and did some initial research for this show, I was in the Chrome store and I say, "Oh my God, there's just there's you know there's five thousand apps here. There's gonna be no problem in sustaining the Chrome show over the long time because I'll be review something every new every week." But what I'm finding is, and if you watch the Chrome show, I'm a little disappointed in the number of true apps that are available on the web store for for the Chrome OS. So if you want more details on that, we'll see. We'll see how the show goes and sustainability-wise. We may have to roll it in here at some point as a segment of this show and drop it as an official show, but we'll give it some time and kind of see how it goes. Hey, there was a new episode of the Robot Underpants online, of course, on Monday from Langley, so check that out. And finally, before we get into the tech content tonight, I know, man, we went long, super long here and just me yakking, um, but I guess every once in a while I need to do that. Um, you guys have been watching what's going on with Twit. Really exciting stuff with Leo Laporte and him uh, getting ready to open his new studio. Uh, I'm really excited for that team over there. Really excited for this space and what they're doing. And something that's cool that he's doing is called the Brick Twit House. And uh, he's having people buy bricks from $150 all the way up to 600 bucks to basically help sponsor. And he's covering some of his costs. And I think I when I did the calculations on it, he was... I think it's going to be able to raise like a quarter of a million dollars with uh, this brick twit house. So I don't want to be a copycat, but what do you guys think? You guys think we can come up with some sort of a buy into the show and be like a, a, a you know, I like the, the plank owner type of thing, you know, being that as prior Navy, if you, when you're a plank owner, like you, you, you're like one of the first ones to come in and, and be a plank owner. I consider insiders to kind of be like plank holders of the show, but, um, I think there's anything that we could do there, any ideas, any thoughts, uh, because we really would like to, at some point, move the studio. And while we wouldn't move into a different building, because you can't do that in Hawaii without lots of zeros on the end of a, of a, a check, um, there is the garage that can be converted and, and built into a studio. So that is a consideration. Um, let me know what you guys think. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into tech here. I've jabbered way, way too long. Again, if you get comments, geeknews at gmail.com. Also, we'll have another special .co domain special offer. Uh, a couple of cool things, too. we got some new sponsors coming on to the show. So those will be coming in within the, probably the next week or so. We're waiting for the, the paperwork's pop. We're just waiting for the deliverables. It's a new, exciting sponsor. I think you guys are going to really get into this particular product that we're going to be introducing. So I'm excited, and it's the first time this company's ever advertised on a podcast. So it's, it's really, really a big deal, and they, and they came in in a big way. So I'll uh, be excited to talk about them here in the next few weeks. So let's go ahead and get into tech. And uh, sorry for dragging so much personal crap tonight through 
and talking to you guys. But um, let me go ahead here and load this first article. It's over at the New York Times talking about how Amazon is backing a an initiative where it would roll back a new state law that forces online retailers to collect sales tax. So Amazon's decision to support the proposed referendum uh, really pits this retailer, this online retailer, against the entire state of California, which, of course, is uh, looking for ways to raise money uh, due to, you know, these budget shortfalls. And we talked a little bit about this on the show. But, you know, what's your guys' opinion? Do you think Amazon needs to start paying sales tax? Do you guys want to pay sales tax on Amazon purchases in the state that you're at? Do you feel it's going to help your state's economy? You know, are you guys willing to do that and pay, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven percent, whatever the percentage is that you that is in your municipality? Um, love to hear guys' feedback on this. But anyway, they're going to go basically and, and dump money into supporting this referendum. So, um, kind of an interesting move on Amazon's part. Along with this, let's talk a little bit about banks. Now. Let's go back a little bit and talk about some history here. Um, when Chris, when my wife and I, when my wife became pregnant with my uh, youngest child, um, we had been about da -da -da, seven years between having kids. Um, so there's a you know big, nice seven-year gap. So we are already out of the diaper market. We are already into, you know, we had a, a seven- and eight-year-old already, uh, and then, of course, the, with my wife being pregnant, one on the way. And we determined by some mailings we got that we feel someone sold um, information to a, a, a specific magazine when we bought a, a, pregnancy, a pregnancy test kit. So it really irked me, and I really tried to get to the bottom of it at the time and was really never, ever to find out the details. So... You know, banks up to this point have not been selling our personal data to marketeers. You know, the banks really know everything that we buy. You know, the transaction data. You know, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I basically, uh, I'm a mile. I collect miles on my Visa card. So eventually we pay for everything on one of our bank cards. And then at the end of the month, I pay the bill off out of the checking account. And I collect the mileage that I got uh, from using the Visa card. And we don't carry balance. We just, you know, we, we pay it off every month. So my history of what I purchased is in black and white. It's, you know, it's deep. You know, they know what kind of food I like. They know what kind of snacks I like. They know um, a whole history of stuff. And we've talked about this before from a standpoint of insurance companies getting a hold of this kind of information. Well, it's being purported that banks plan to compete with Groupon and Living Social by targeting coupons and deals at credit card holders based on their shopping habits. Now, banks are constricted under financial privacy laws. And what they've done is they found a way around this. And what they're going to be doing is so that they don't violate privacy laws, they're going to be selling shopping habits. Shopping habits the same way Facebook sells personal data about its users in network. Now, the folks are saying this is a clear and clever privacy workaround. And the article over in Slashdot says, just as Facebook allows advertisers to specifically target certain kinds of users based on their profile information without actually providing profile information to advertisers, how do you, does, that's double speak, right? Banks plan to allow advertisers to send deals and coupons to their customers based on what they bought before. So I have something in my back cabinet back there that I wouldn't, you know, it's basically a cigar humidor. And it's not that I will smoke 25 cigars. I like to have maybe one cigar every two or three months. But at the same time, there's a, there's a, a purchase record of that. So am I going to start getting coupons for tobacco products? Am I going to start getting coupons for soda that I buy? Am I going to get water? Am I going to get uh, coupons from, you know, here's, this is, this is really gray. So if they're going to sell habits, shopping habits, it's the same thing as sharing our personal information. 
they're saying no user data actually leaves the network. It's all done inside. So in other words, the bank holds the information. They've got all the data. They know exactly what we've bought. They have Joe customer come in and say, hey, I want to reach people that are um, uh, buying a Coke or Pepsi or Mountain Dew. I want to reach that specific person. And they say, well, we got that information. Now you go ahead and you can give us the ad deals and we'll distribute to those customers. So essentially the vendors get access to us and the banks are the vehicle from which they make that happen. So I can see what's going to happen now. We've already gotten, if you get your, if you still get your credit carded by paper, usually it's like 10 pages. The first page is your bill and the other eight or nine are ads. American Express is famous for doing that. And I can see now where we're going to get a bill that's going to have four or five coupons on it. Or if we go to our bank's website and we log in, we're going to get advertised to. So what do you guys think about this? Do you think the banks are skirting financial privacy laws? They're really not selling your information, but they're controlling it. And then they're directing the stuff in network to you. Or doesn't it bother you at this point? Hey, we know. We know what... Uh, we they know what we're doing already. So basically how it's gonna work is every time the bank every time a customer cashes into one of those deals, the bank gets a commission. So um I find it l even more disturbing. When are they gonna start selling that information to insurance companies and you know when's it actually gonna leak out? And stuff's gonna start popping outside the firewall. That's what I think we all have to be uh very, very worried about. Of course, if you've got comments on today's show, you can call the voicemail hotline, 619-342-7365. Open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Groupon had an email outage today, and uh, apparently uh, they had a huge, it had a huge impact. Uh, well, actually, it's over the weekend, they had an email outage, and it had a huge impact on the number of uh, deals that were actually um, utilized over the weekend. If I guess if people doesn't get an email with a Groupon uh, suggestion, people aren't acting on Groupon deals. I have yet to get a deal on Groupon. I'll be the first to say we've looked, and usually the stuff they're offering is crap. But um, as some of you I know have used Groupon quite a bit. But there is some uh, worry that Groupon's email outage exposed a lack of brand loyalty, and people aren't just going to the site and look. I know we don't. Let's talk a little bit more about privacy here. The Department of Justice is basically telling people that have computers they seize, you have to unlock your computer. You have to give us your password. Turns out that there's a case going on, involves more, uh, more, uh, mortgage fraud, where the U.S. Department of Justice is pushing the defendant to be forced to decrypt her hard drive. So not only does she have the login enabled, all the data on her computer is, is encrypted at a high level and basically, the Department of Justice is saying, you need to put your password in here so we can decrypt your media. They claim if they cannot force such decryptions, law enforcement will be unable to gather important evidence. But the defendant's lawyer and the Electronic Frontier Foundation have made a claim that forcing such a decryption would be a violation of the defendant's Fifth Amendment rights. Of course, the Fifth Amendment rights is the a right to not to self-incriminate. So if you know, if you have a computer and there's data on there that's going to uh, cause you to potentially do jail time or be a charged in a civil suit or whatever it may be, and you have that data encrypted and the, and the Department of Justice says you will open that computer um, by giving them the – or giving, you will decrypt that data by giving them that key, um, at that point they um, – you've self-incriminated yourself, Right. Because you've given them access to something. Now, this is going to be huge. This is going to be a big um, decision that's going to be made by the courts. The uh, prosecutor in case has insisted that the defendant would not be forced to disclose her uh, passphrase, but only to enter the passphrase in the computer to decrypt the drive. Same difference. Okay. Once she's entered that, it's open. They can get the data off, Right. Um, I guess this is where what happens if she refuses the court says you will open this I guess if she doesn't open it what is she found in contempt of court and she goes to jail anyway for a while so um, 
What do you guys think about this on encryption on your hard drives? It, do you have the the right to get access to that, or do depart do does um, prosecutors and law enforcement have the right to that data? If they, you know, I think from the most part, <laughs> if someone's a hard hardened criminal, they're going to say, "Hey, hey, go ahead and put me in jail for contempt of court." I'm not unlocking that hard drive. First of all, if you got data on there in the first place, you're you're pretty stupid to have it have it on the on the machine if you're doing something illegal. But apparently, they feel that data is on there, so uh, it's it's a good uh, good test of our Fifth Amendment, don't you think? So we'll see how this develops. We'll keep track of this story. Well, if you're a um, Apple user, if you use the uh, iOS and buy apps. It appears that you uh, buy more and pay for more than uh, many other vendors do, like having a Windows machine. The um, the folks at Apple are quite happy that uh, the App Store downloads are up 61% this year over 2010, with, with the users downloading an average of 83 apps up from 51 last year. You know what it is. <laughs> it's just like my phone. I buy an app, and I say, that sucks. And I delete it. And I don't have 51 apps on my on my iPhone. Well, I probably do. But it's just like you, you play with something for a little while, and it's like you get bored. It's like my son, he's always asking me to get free games. He plays the free game until it can't be played no more. And he says, can I get another free game? And they just keep going in the queue. But um, Apple users are downloading 32.3 million apps per day, nearly triple the rate of 11.9 million um last year. So uh this is huge with the App Store. Of course I told you about my experience with uh, rebuilding my Mac and using the App Store right from my uh from uh from OS ten. I was pretty impressed. But uh we're spending a lot of money with them, that's for sure. How many times have you heard a commercial and there's certain things that kind of clue you in okay so you see a car commercial right and they're driving and then you're hearing the motor right the performance of the motor or the whistling of the road or the sound of a door shutting Doom. you know and there's certain things you listen to or you see um that your mind becomes accustomed to right well for years engineers have created artificial sounds to to fool us and there's a great article article over at the on the BBC talking about this particular um, things that engineers do and um, there's uh, in, the, in the top the, the subject they use specifically was car manufacturing um, manufacturers want you to get a certain type of a sound when you shut the door to the car they want you not to hear a click they want you to hear a, a certain type of a uh, the, the the latch clicking a certain way and it making a certain type of sound. And what they re- what they've done is they put uh, compensators and some things in the actual door to to actually when you slam it to have it make a certain sound. And I never really thought about this, but it's all about in the salesmanship of different types of st- um, equipment. So is there anyone in the audience that's been involved in making something? sound or be presented a certain way as part of the overall experience and marketability of a product. And I really never thought of, I really, really did not think about, you know, you know, a car door, when you shut it, there's definitely a difference between shutting a, a Volkswagen door and shutting a Volvo door. You know, there's a different sound to it. There's a, you know, it's, it, there's a certain different quality to it. And, um, and I think, and I as I think more about this, I just wonder how many times we've all been influenced by those types of sounds. So, um, how many times have you, when you've played with a new digital camera, have you, you know, the, the digital camera doesn't make a, you know, like a typical shutter click, but you can, the, the manufacturers have basically made a sound every time you press it, it sends it on a speaker, ching, you know, that sound that the camera makes. And you know you want it. You, you're, we're all used to maybe the old cameras, so you want it to kind of sound the same way. Um, it's true. So it's kind of it's a funny. There's a whole science and there's a whole uh, marketing engineering behind it. So I thought it was kind of a cool article to share with you that was up on uh, with the BBC. 
we've talked about this before, and um, I guess we all should be aware of this. And this is something that's concerned me from a, for a very, very long time. Um, a Homeland Security official confirmed last week that tech components imported from overseas, many of which end up in some of the most popular American gadgets, are often infected with malicious software. So here's what we have. When you think about this, when there is supply chain risk, you have products coming out of China that are being made in China, chips being made in China, that are being put on gear that is bought from, by us, that was 100% assembled in China. Look at the iPad. Um, virtually everything inside that device, or probably my uh, HP computer over here, um, probably the monitor that's on my desk, they all have a large number of components from China or other countries. So what's to stop? What's to stop a country that wants to learn more about us embedding certain things in computers, monitors, into webcams, you know, that software code, you know, there could be some remnant stuff in there that could be doing some very nasty stuff. Now, the range of these issues go way beyond personal electronic components. They talk about um, the fact that the, the Department of Defense is buying components now for gear, you know, and I think they've actually got rules in place that components have to be American made, but because American manufacturing being outsourced outside the United States, you know, basically all our chip manufacturing is going to other place. You know, here we are, we're relying upon a supply chain of components coming from third world, from countries that may not have a political alignment with us and could end up being where we have this Trojan horse sitting on our desktops. Now, am I a conspiracy theorist? Do I think this is happening? Well, we see it all the time. Just like they said, USB sticks coming, they have malware on them. But, you know, what's to stop someone from getting a very sophisticated piece of code, putting it on a storage device, putting it on a hard drive, putting it on a computer, putting it in a monitor, embedding it in a keyboard, you name it, doesn't take a lot. Now, I'm sure these components are QA'd by the, the representatives of the company. Matter of fact, you've never received a product direct from China, have you? Oh, that's right. You're probably your last iPad or iPhone that you bought was shipped straight from China to your house. So the manufacturer didn't see that device. They don't know if that device has been tampered with. So, um, how do we how do we deal with this? Are we setting ourselves up for another virtual Pearl Harbor by having stuff come in from from other countries? Uh, love to hear you guys' feedback on this. I know you got to have this. Hopefully, this got your wheels spinning a little bit, and um, you know maybe it's not for sinister purposes. Maybe it's not for national security type things. Maybe it's just for industrial espionage. You know, uh, folks at a company like Microsoft or another company orders a batch of new computers and they order them, they come in from China and Microsoft installs those computers across their network. All the thing you, next thing you know, everything in Microsoft's um, software database is being sent overseas to someplace. Or someone's coming in the back door and planting bombs in those in that code. So uh, you never know, do you? So what do you guys think? Love to hear your feedback on this one, geeknews at gmail.com. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to move here. Um, let's talk just a little bit more about the ISPs basically uh, kowtowing to the entertainment industry. And the EFF has weighed in here, and this is an article that's over on Tech Dirt. And uh, basically it talks about the you know, this this backdooring of, of information or backdooring this uh, six strike law. Let's see, is this going to load? It might. The materials, here's what the EFF says. Um, the EFS is pointing out a questionable bit of the agreement which suggests that the entertainment industry may be knowingly backdooring disconnections into the agreement 
by misinterpreting a section of the DMCA, which they also helped write. Um, so here's the vid. Did the video quit? Uh, I don't know if the video is still online or not. So anyway, we'll go ahead and continue this, and then I'll I'll check on this later. Hopefully it didn't. If it did, uh, shoot. Anyway, so what's going on is the um, the EFF is pointing out where the ISPs are not required to terminate subscriber accounts as a condition of the agreement with the con content industry and that the collaboration does not amount to a three strikes regime. But the material also takes pains to assert that DMCA requires that the ISPs have in place a termination policy for repeat copyright infringers a condition of availing themselves of the act's safe harbor provision. Translation, the content industry is staking its position that the ISPs um, that don't terminate subscribers alert five or, after five or six alert will lose their DMCA protection. So in other words, they're saying, hey, if you guys engage in this activity, uh, if you don't to kill the account, you're, the ISP is going to lose their safe harbor's protection. Because they are knowingly then allowing someone to move copyright material, so it's like a it's like a catch twenty two. So anyway, that uh, it's an interesting uh, thought process here by the EFF and covered by the folks over at uh, the EFF. I think what we've happened is the stream has died on uh, one of our channels here tonight. That's too bad. I don't know what's happened here. That's too bad. Huh. Um, well, the show goes on. Over on Ars Tech, unhappy meal. Data retention bill could lure predators into McDonald's, libraries, and a variety of other places where uh, wireless access is available due to the loophole and allowing, and we talked about this before, and basically allowing companies that offer wireless service not to can, uh, maintain logs. So there's a huge... Uh, um, Huge concern here that uh, some of this activity could be moved into uh, public places. Pretty uh, sickening to think that you may have uh, a predator of sorts sitting next to you at McDonald's using a Wi-Fi to gain access to, to that type of material. Hey, let's talk a little bit about the Fukushima reactors. Uh, there's an update here on CNET talking about this. And uh, boy, oh boy, uh, they're saying it could take like until 2021 to uh, defuel the plants. Uh, they're building a big shroud to go around it that they're going to basically uh, entomb these uh, reactors. Um, they've been using uh, robots and a whole bunch of other stuff. So there's some cool videos of them using uh, robots to actually do some cleanup. Have a link up in the show notes and that, but it's, boy, it's slow going, going to be very expensive and time-consuming for sure. But um, no relief in sight at this point in Fukushima, but they are making um, amazing uh, uh, steps in basically getting the, the equipment ready to enshroud the, uh, the reactor, so we'll see where this moves. If you live in Philadelphia, it appears that the Philadelphia Inquirer and the Daily News are planning to start selling a cheap Android tablet bundled for uh, paid digital content from the newspaper, and it's unclear um, whether or not that the... Um, Let's see, what does it say here? Yeah, they're going to be selling cheap Android tablets bundled with a four paid digital content from the newspaper. They say it's unclear whether the plan involves an off the shelf tablet, um, but uh, apparently they're going to be buying some existing tablets that are available. But uh, can you imagine the uh, next way you're going to, hey, you want to get the, uh, the newspaper? Well, you have to, to uh, get one of these tablets. This is how you're going to get the news from here on out. I don't know how the people in Philadelphia are going to react to that. Why don't they just put a, an app out for the existing uh, tablets that are out there. Uh, some big news on the uh, Facebook side. Uh, the battle over who controls the information in your social graph and specifically who controls the email addresses of your contacts uh, really continues to ramp up here by Facebook uh, shutting down another Chrome extension. This is the second one that they've shut down where basically it was allowing you to extract your contacts and your friends off of Facebook. So, um, they're, they're playing hardball with any company that comes in uh, that wants to uh, to play here. So 
Uh, we'll see where this goes, but uh, Facebook is definitely in a battle right now to make sure that they don't have uh, uh, data getting out of their company. It's being reported by Fox 23 that a study in New York City is that one in five crashes has been caused by texting. I find that to be a pretty remarkable statistic, that one in five crashes have been caused by texting. What's happening to these people? They're causing crashes and fatalities while texting. Are they being held accountable? Those of you, has, Does anyone know of any cases where someone has been charged with involuntary manslaughter or manslaughter due to an automobile accident where they were texting? Has, any, has anybody been charged and, and held to account in knowing that they're not supposed to be doing this when they're driving down the road? Um, you know, if you've heard any, you know, I'd love to hear your feedback on this. If you've, you've got any information, uh, definitely uh, drop me a line here um, at the show. Okay, um, if you've got an Android phone, researchers are reporting the discovery of malware targeting Android devices, specifically a new variant of the Do a Droid Dream Trojan found in apps that Google has removed before from the Android market, but it appears that more apps are being put up and that Google's trying to basically they're kill them as quick as they found them. But uh, this is some new malware that's basically infecting uh, Android devices, okay? Florida judges tossed out a key MPAA claim against uh, Hotfile. You know that there's a lawsuit going on between MPAA and Hotfile.com. And this is, uh, this is good news. The Hotfile folks won a big one here. Um, by basically the Florida judge dismissed the claim that Hotfile committed direct copyright infringement. The case now proceeds to determine whether Hotfile holds any secondary liability for inducing copyright infringements by its users. So we'll keep you appeased of that and uh, see where this uh, moves to. The uh, anonymous hackers have uh, basically leaked 90,000 military email accounts in its latest uh, attack. They went after Booz Allen Hamilton, a, which is a big uh, firm. They're more than a uh, – they they're an American consulting firm that does uh, a lot of business with a lot of companies, but they guess they also do a substantial amount of work for the Pentagon, and uh, they basically pulled in uh, – pulled out 90,000 logins of military personnel, including – uh, folks from U.S. CENTCOM, uh, Southern Command, Marine Corps, and other and various of other um, entities, including Homeland Security. So uh, I haven't seen uh, the details on this, but it uh, doesn't bode well for that type of data getting out for sure. Of course, you know, I've been playing a lot with Google Plus, and uh, the folks at uh, Google are working on uh, integrating Gmail a little closer into the system. So we'll see how this goes. Some folks think that uh, Google Plus has a potential if they get the right type of messaging built into it to eliminate uh, emails. We know it. I don't know if I would go that far or not, but there is going to be close integration between Google Plus and Gmail. If you're a Firefox fan, Firefox Beta 6 available now in the Android market. Go ahead and pick that up. So uh, this is Mark Mozilla's latest release for Android. Beta 6 comes jam-packed with slew of improvements, including faster startup times, less memory usage, and tablet optimization, among many others. So this is a beta release, so be careful out there. But again, Firefox Beta 6 available now in the Android market, so pick up the, the Android mobile browser. Have you heard about this principal that was hypnotizing students? First of all, who would let a principal hypnotize their child? I don't understand this. I guess a couple of students committed suicide that he had hypnotized. Insane. I, I, would you ever? W no, I don't think so. I don't get it. I don't understand why a parent would allow this person to do that. I really, really don't. Moving on here, the folks at Bing. Microsoft Bing's team has unveiled a new user interface for Bing Maps, the new UI is for computer version as opposed to mobile, and it's available today. So I haven't used uh, Bing Maps. I guess that's the best way to say it. And I'll just have to check it out. Uh, but um, I had a buddy that uh, switched from the iPhone to the Android, and he was totally jazzed by <laughs> the, what he was able to do with uh, Google Maps with his Android phone. And I didn't quite know why he wasn't having the same success with his iPhone before, but um, he was he's pretty happy with the move. So... He seems to think it was far superior than what uh, the iPhone had. Over at Ogizmo, there is a smoke alarm that's $149 that comes with a, a, a monthly subscription fee as well 
that will automatically text up to four people in case it uh, goes off. You know, if you're going to put a fire alarm in with a monitoring service, you put it in and have it tied to your alarm system so it calls the fire department. It doesn't call, doesn't text you. What good does it, a, fire, a smoke detector going off texting you do where you could probably pay the same amount of money and have a ADT security system in your home where it was the smoke detector was tied to the alarm system? I don't fully get this one here. Uh, definitely not on the recommended buy list for sure. Hey, the Space Station Reply Pod hosted from Alanis Bay is basically uh, attached to the International Space Station delivering 9,403 pounds of supplies, including 2,677 pounds of uh, food. So uh, it's good to go there. The folks at uh, the International Space Station are unloading a massive load of stuff of groceries <laughs> and parts and fuel and uh, oxygen. So uh, anyway, enough to sustain the International Space Station with the crew on board to uh, 2012. Cool video of the uh, of the shuttle doing its last belly flip in front of the National Space Station. I have that link up in the show notes for you to check out. Um, and there's been an extra day added to the shuttle mission, so they're going to get an extra day in space. Congratulations to the team up there on that. Let's talk about cars for just a second. We don't talk about cars too much in this show. But will a 56 mile per gallon fuel law force luxury cars out of the U.S. market? Well, the folks from Mercedes and Land Rover are really concerned about the 2016 56 mile per gallon standard that they have to reach. Um, you know, the way they work this is that they take a manufacturer's full line of cars and they do some averaging to come out what the average miles per gallon is across their line of vehicles. And... Um, you know, Ford is doing things like uh, making a uh, F-150 that uh, has a, a, turbo, a turbocharger in it uh, in, in basically reducing the cylinders from uh, 8 to 6. So you get the same amount of horsepower. They're taking some of their other vehicles and going from 4 cylinders to 3 and use uh, EcoBoost. So there's a lot of different things that the manufacturers are doing to you know work towards this new mile-per-gallon standard. And if they don't reach it, there's a huge, huge penalty. I think it's a twenty-five thousand dollars per offending vehicle. That's that's what's going to be added on to the sticker price if they don't meet these new um, fuel economy standards. And of course, uh, German cars and Land Rovers are not known for uh, you know they're they're designed for power and get up and go. And uh, usually, the people that buy them don't aren't worried about having you know putting uh, a gas in the vehicle every every whip stitch, but um, they are worried about being able to compete in the U.S. market here due to this new standard. So what are you guys' thoughts on that? You guys, uh, I'm not, I don't drive a BMW. I don't, can't afford a BMW, <laughs> but uh, um, some of you might, and you may like your Mercedes as well, and uh, or your Land Rover. I'd love to have a Land Rover, beautiful vehicle. And um, what if you couldn't get one in the, in the, in the United States after 2016? Or would you be willing to pay the twenty five thousand dollar extras for the for the vehicle? That's just based, that's on top of sticker price. Crazy. Hey, Hyundai has um, introduced what's called Blue Link, and uh, you know Hyundai is really they're doing some amazing things, and they've integrated Blue Link. It's basically the same type of a system as GM's OnStar, and they made it half the price. Um, it's only it's seventy nine dollars per year. A step up per version uh, is, is one hundred and seventy nine dollars. So there's a couple of packages you can pick, but you can get this with uh, the the two thousand twelve Hyundai Sonatas, and I think they're still doing a hundred thousand uh, bumper to bumper warranty on those vehicles. And uh, test test drove a couple of Hyundai's already. Not a bad vehicle, uh, but uh, they've come a long way in a very short time. That's for sure. But anyway, they've got the Blue Link. So they're trying to do that to kind of compete with OnStar. But these have more services. I think there's like 30-some basic services that come with the uh, the $79 a year price point. So interesting to see where they're going with this. Um, what's the iron? Can you guys believe this? It's like uh, letting a fox in the hen house. The United Nations named North Korea chair of the Conference on Disarmament which is heavily focused on the prevention of nuclear arms and, and nuclear disarmament. They've made the North Korean 
folks the chair of that conference? <laughs> wow. Okay. Hey, CNN is reporting a group of congressmen backed by the nuclear industry pushing to reopen Yucca Mountain nuclear waste site. Well, as you guys know, this, the the uh, site has closed. Well, site was never really finished, and the of course the Obama administration scraped the project. Um, there's some uh, pros and cons of why it should be open, uh, but uh, it is also worth noting that um, they've they've had to maintain electricity to the to the site. So you know we're paying for it already anyway, um, and some maintenance to it just because of the uh, uh, the way it was built. So interesting to see uh, that uh, we've pay been paying for this thing uh, for a while here, even though that uh, we're not utilizing it for it was intended uh, nuclear storage purposes. Hey, Google has sought immediate uh, appeal of its secret of its Street View wiretap ruling. A federal judge has granted permission, uh, basically, to allow a uh, federal wiretapping lawsuit to go forward, and uh, so this June twentieth decision. And nearly a dozen combined lawsuits seeking damages for Google eavesdropping on open unencrypted Wi-Fi networks from its steep street view wire, uh, mapping cars is uh, is moving forward. And uh, Google claims that they did not breach the Wiretap Act, but the judge doesn't see it well that way, and it's allowing it to go forward. the The latest beta version of iOS five has been released to developers, and I've got a good article here with all the links to some of the. You guys can get a preview of some of the new stuff that's going to be coming to iOS 5. Okay. Um, Microsoft Steve Ballmer says 400 million Windows 7 licenses sold. That's huge. 400 million in under two years. And we're expecting Windows uh, 8 to come next year. And they've already moved 100 million uh, copies of Office 2010 since its launch. And I guess, you know, this was kind of a strike back at Apple when Apple was bragging about their their software sales. So we'll see how uh, Apple does on the 14th with their rollout of, of Lion. British researchers have designed a million-chip neural network, which is one one-hundredth as complex as our brains. And uh, that's amazing, a million-chip neural network. And uh, wow, so what they've done is they're trying to link as many as a million ARM processors ARM processors, in order to simulate just a small fraction of our brain. The resulting model called Spinnaker, a spiking neural network architecture, represents less than 1% of a human's gray matter, which contains 100 billion neurons. Uh, wow. Yet even this small-scale representation, researchers believe, will yield insights into how the brain functions. So cool stuff. How much money did it cost to build that? That's what I want to know. Okay, last article of the night. Uh, guys, there's a new magazine coming for you. It's called The Cosmo for Guys. Um, I don't know if it's done by the same folks that does the ladies' Cosmopolitan magazine, but uh, looking uh, from the images on the initial release, I don't think uh, uh, the ladies are going to be picking this uh guy's portion of the magazine up but you'll be able to get get it as an app and uh has all kinds of tips in there which you would expect for uh to be found in a typical cosmo for guys so we'll see where this leads well it looks like my email service on the mainstream went down that totally blows so i don't know what's going on here i see a blinking light over there it looks like the network is up but i know the the network is down and uh we definitely crashed at the beginning of the show for the video, which totally sucks, so I have to replay the show here. But um, that's the first that's happened. I wonder what's going on with my network connection. Um, got to see if I can even load email. I don't know if I can even load email because I've got it all tied to the cloud. Um, no, I don't think I can. Well, maybe I can I got an email here from uh, Richard. He says, hey, Todd, being the geek I am, I've always been interested in trying solar panels, mostly for reasons of learning and saving money. I have a nice, uninstructed, south-facing roof, but I'm still just going to wait because I keep thinking more efficient technology will be coming out and initial costs will drop a little. I also want to research more about the lifespan of all the equipment. Yeah, they're saying about 20 years on the, I think, on the equipment. 
got an email from Henry. He gave me an update. He said, hey, Todd, I didn't know if you knew this or not. He said, uh, basically was talking about the fire and volunteer fans that were out looking for my uh, missing nephews that uh, have been missing since uh, Thanksgiving time frame. They had a little uh, search training in uh, Marincy, Michigan this past uh, this past weekend, and they're just uh, trying to keep the uh, keep the word going there on those three missing boys, the Skelton boys, which are my uh, cousin's sons. So anyway, um, I got an email from here from Cheryl. Um, let's see here. It says. Let me say first that network providers should be prohibited from offering services that they cannot deliver and blaming the consumer. Consumers subscribe to a service that they have a right to expect delivery on since we are charged a hefty price for service that are sometimes offered but in real reality yet to come. In 1995, uh, my son, a police officer, obviously an adult, while overseas in the U.S. Army Reservist Bosnia Keating Mesh, see what? In 1980, okay. In 1995, I had an AOL. He's basically talking about her son who was in Bosnia on a peacekeeping Michigan. She goes on to say, I had an AOL, a single user account, twice they kicked me off, stating that my 14 year old son was using profanity in the WrestleMania chat room. As I recall, AOL had server problems and couldn't keep up with customer usage, so they kicked you off at will uh, to manage their shortcomings. Throttling would be the word used today. It was a lie, and the two times I called for reinstatement, I spoke to the same lady. Interesting. My concern is companies deciding who can use their services and who can't, how much data bandwidth you can use, even though you're paying for it, etc. I don't have a 14-year-old son. He's 45, an adult and a parent himself who had, who had his own service at the time, not even the same company that I was using. I see a money-making scheme here, deceit and false accusations. Since legal measures are involved, I also see credit issues or the beginning of the end. The company is shooting themselves in the foot and driving people away from socialization into set-top boxes, perhaps even back to using the home phone and sitting down and writing a letter and paper for a change. I went to Comcast Infinity when I left AOL on it and had a happier user experience. I went to Verizon Files now because my town finally went online, giving me the opportunity to have a choice. So I can tell from you, I can, I can tell you from personal experience, I see a problem here. Many of my coworkers experienced the same thing back then from AOL. They didn't have a 14-year-old son or daughters either. I learned a lot from your podcast. Thank you. Um, anyway, got this email here from Cheryl. Cheryl, thanks so much. And again, this subject was based on ISP, cell companies kicking off their networks. And thank you for your feedback, and thanks for being part of the, the Ohana here. Um, got an email from Max. He says, Hey, Todd, one of your longtime listeners from New York, I should have known you had a Plus account. I'm trying this out on Google Netbook. Looking forward to group chat sometime. Hope the wife family doing well and things in Japan are going as best they can given the circumstances. Thanks, Max. I appreciate that as well. And Cheryl had a private note on her email too. Trucker Tom sent me an email about a secret agent's rating at Apple Store on a webcam artist. I think we talked about that on the last show. But uh, if I didn't put these up, I'll put these links up uh, from Trucker Tom as well. And, uh, but anyway, they sent an email. Thanks very much. And uh, we had one voicemail. So let me go ahead and play that here. And, uh, and then we'll bounce out and be done, uh, done for the show. All right, let me go ahead and, uh, and play this. Hey, Todd, it's Vivage from New York. I just wanted to make a comment about uh, the games being protected under free speech. Well, the case is that you mentioned the games would be sold to minors now. That isn't actually the case. GameStop still has the right to withhold sales unless a parent or a guardian is present. And I spent a considerable amount of time reading into games being protected in free speech because I like games and play a lot of them and stuff. So the deal is that the law that California was enforcing would have made the sale of games illegal and people could go to prison for it. Also, there was a fine of up to $1,000 attached. So people would probably not stock these games as if there was a mistake. It would have been a problem. The games are still not going to be sold to minors since it is still you know, not really accepted. So I just wanted to make that comment and change in what you said earlier. Thanks. Keep up the good work. 
Hey, thanks for the clarification on that. That's uh, indeed good news, and uh, thanks for the clarification on the rules on the games uh, attend- not actually being able to be sold to minors. So uh, that's that's a big deal. But uh, again, if you guys have comments on the show, uh, definitely drop me a line here at Geek News at geeknews at gmail dot com, or you can call the voicemail hotline at six one nine three four two seven three six five. Hopefully, I'll be able to post the show up. I don't know with the uh, the main internet going down. It's been it's done this recently. I've, it's dropped two or three times. I wonder if uh, my uh, cable provider, even though I'm on a commercial account, is getting pissy about the uh, the up, uploaded bandwidth or something. I don't know. We'll find out. But anyway, everyone, thanks for hanging out with me. It's been uh, great to be here with you on again on a, a Monday evening. We'll have a regular show on Thursday. And uh, potentially with my uh, wife being back in town, uh, time will tell. And we'll know whether or not she's coming home here in the next couple of days. If not, uh, she'll get a couple more weeks in Japan to uh, be with her father and uh, deal with the situation there. But uh, it's been my pleasure to bring you the show. Thanks for being part of the Ohana. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for supporting the sponsors of the show. And until next time, everyone take care and aloha.